Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Oracle DB online training. So today we will be covering uh, how to configure a two node drag data guard for which we have a, a, we will be configuring a two node primary rag database and based upon that primary database, we will be uh, creating a two node rag data guard. Okay, so before we begin, I'll be requesting all the new friends to subscribe my YouTube channel Oracle DB online training and on this platform you will be getting a lot of videos such as uh, oracle drag database configuration oem management database upgradation about from that you can uh, get the uh, data guard configurations and awr report analysis so there are various topics we have covered so far and uh, if you want to learn those topics you can uh, watch these videos and please subscribe my youtube channel so also you can get in touch with me on facebook as well as on Twitter as well as on Telegram's channels and if you have any question you can uh, send me an email I will definitely try to help you out if you want a personal training you can get in touch with me on this personal number okay so let's uh, start today's agenda that is the configuration of uh, two node rack database uh, two node drag data guard uh, configuration so so th this will be our environment setup that we will be uh, uh, doing and basically uh, we have uh, this is the primary side we have okay we'll be uh, configuring uh, uh, two separate nodes now one is prod one second one is prod two so this will be a combined uh, two node drag database on primary side and uh, we will be installing the latest uh, 19.11 uh, version and uh, uh, we will be co configuring the data guard replication uh, which is on standby or uh, you can say a dr site and it will be on separate machines with uh, machine names stby and stby2 okay so these are the basically uh, ips that we will be uh, using throughout this entire tutorial 131 and 132 will be our primary side ips and these two will be a uh, standby side or a secondary side okay so this this is my uh, shared asm that i will be using for configuring the rack database on uh, primary side and this will be our uh, standby location okay so uh, this is a very uh, i mean uh, architectural diagram you can say we'll be using throughout the entire tutorial and uh, so let's uh, move further what is the system uh, minimum requirement for this entire configuration so basically uh, we will be installing uh, oracle linux 7 or latest so we, we have this oracle linux 7.8 so i'll be uh, installing that operating system and uh, we'll be keep creating a two separate mount points so u01 and u02 uh, for the i mean grid and rdbms software separate installations okay and uh, basically we will be required a total four separate nodes on virtual box machines and uh, uh, two will be a primary and uh, other two will be for standby okay and apart from that we we, have, we will be required 80 GB of space uh, for better configuration and uh, uh, each node will require at least 80 GB of free space. That means you will be required some, some around uh, 320 GB of uh, space. You can keep this uh, space little lower also like 60 GB, but uh, that will be like space crunch and uh, you might be facing some challenges during the time of installation. So it's better to keep uh, these values little higher and apart from that we have will be basically uh, configuring this green and rdbms on two separate mount points so there will be no conflict like uh, we'll be using a grid user for a grid installation rdbms user oracle user for rdbms so uh, basically our idea is to keep everything separate don't um, i mean um, make confusion okay so uh, later we have to uh, basically we have to download the software from Oracle websites, I will be providing the links. You can download it from the uh, site. And uh, 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 next, you will be required minimum 6 GB of RAM, uh, or you can say 8 GB is if you have sufficient uh, memory on your servers, you can use at least 8 GB of RAM that will provide you a beneficial uh, during the time of configuration. Okay and uh, so overall you will be um, i mean uh, additionally you will require 60 gb of uh, other space uh, 30 gb uh, for primary site and this will be our asm i mean shared storage for primary site 30 gb and 30 gb for standby sites so these are the minimum system requirements that we will be having 
will require okay and so the installation process uh, what i'll do i'll just uh, quickly install this oracle linux and uh, uh, on my uh, first we uh, so basically what i'll do i'll create one node uh, which is uh, installed on oracle linux 7.8 and also uh, the main main steps that is required for this installation i'll i'll guide you okay so stick to the video and uh, try to watch uh, the entire tutorial so that you'll get it everything uh, what i'll i have done in in this tutorial i created everything from scratch to uh, i mean uh, end of the video you'll be uh, getting the two node rag data guard configuration so uh, please watch the entire video. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, <clears throat> log into my virtual box. Uh, and here I'll, I need to select the new tab. And from here, we, we have to choose the name. So I'll choose the naming convention as prod one. So prod one will be our primary database. And uh, from here, we, we have to basically provide the locations where you want to keep this. So I'll keep default location and this is the linux version that we need to select click on the next tab and here we have to provide the ram so what i'll do i'll just provide the 6000 mb that is around somewhere around 6 gb and the next one you have to select the hard disk size so create a virtual hard disk now and you need to create click on create So here we have to basically uh, uh, choose virtual hard disk. Uh, you can select uh, any of these options. So I'll stick to virtual hard disk option. Click next. Yeah. The next uh, page is very important. <clears throat> here basically two things are there. Either you can choose a dynamic allocation or fixed. So try to allocate dynamically. So if uh, in case th there is a space issue, so you can at least uh, increase your uh, space requirements. Okay. So we'll click on dynamically allocated. Click next. Here we have to provide the size of the virtual box. So I'll provide 80 GB of uh, this virtual box size and click create. So now what we have to do is we have to basically uh, make certain changes in this uh, configuration. So basically uh, this is your uh, naming of your uh, virtual machine. And uh, uh, next we have to provide the bidirectional uh, support for your um, uh, clipboard so that you can copy and paste uh, very smoothly from your to and from your virtual machine to your host next then we have to basically select the system uh, requirements like base memory we have already selected 6 gb here you, you can provide the processor so based upon your available processor you can allocate these values next uh, um, we'll try to i mean and the the very uh, important thing that you need to select is the network configuration so basically we will be, we will require three network for your um, each machine will require a three separate uh, network cards so one will be used for your public ip so pubnet so what we'll do will provide the naming convention as pubnet this will be your for use for your public net and the next one we, we use for private net. Okay. And the third one will be used as a bridge adapter that will be helpful for your, uh, uh, I mean, ho connecting from your host to your uh, virtual box. So basically, uh, whenever you're con configuring any um, uh, RAG database configuration, you will require three separate networks. Uh, okay. And uh, apart from that, you can provide the said uh, location of your softwares where uh, your softwares are kept so that uh, it will automatically, uh, I mean, it will automatically uh, pop up during the time of your, <clears throat> so I just provided the link of, uh, I mean, the path for uh, softwares. Okay, just select, or it will auto mount it, click okay. So, now what is uh, the very important thing we have to select the operating system from where it will boot so this is my iso image so oracle linux uh, server and uh, we'll click ok and we'll start the installation 
what i'll uh, suggest you guys to you can uh, i mean uh, will not cover everything for like uh, installation uh, details uh, you can watch my previous video i have shown how to uh, perform the installation uh, so let me just finish the installation then i'll uh, guide you further okay for the timing i'll pause this video so guys now installation for uh, prod prod one is completed successfully so you can see on the screen that uh, um, this is my host name prod one dot local domain that we have defined during the time of our installation and uh, this will be our node one for our primary side and uh, apart from that i'll show you the network details so basically uh, uh, there are three network configurations are required uh, first will be used as a public net second one is a private net third one is used as a uh, your local connection of purpose okay so uh, we have to keep it on every time and apart from that uh, just select this uh, connect automatically and you can see the ip address that i have defined it is a uh, 192.168.56.71 uh, I will show you uh, the detail about the network, the configuration that will that we will be using in entire session. So let me just go to the network page first. So this will be our primary side network configuration. So this will be used as my public IP, and this is private IPs. Okay, so in public segment for no node one that is broad we have selected 56.71 i'll mention on the uh, this uh, network file that it is 56.71 this will be used as a public ip okay and uh, apart from that second no uh, this network this will be used as a private net and we have to select connect automatically and so that it will during the uh, restart it will automatically is connected uh, here you can see 192.168.10.1 this will be my uh, private net for node one okay similarly we have to configure for the other node also and uh, you'll click apply and okay so these these three network configuration and here you can see this is my host one and apart from that we have to check the space that we have allocated so i allocated around 28 gb for u01 28 gb for u02 and this is my media where all my softwares are kept i just uh, auto mounted it so that we can use it and um, apart from that you can see my temp is around 6 gb and uh, trap memory i have given as a around 7.5 gb okay so with this configuration uh, we are good and uh, what i'll do i'll go back to my initial slides so let me just uh, come back so at this junction we have installed oracle linux and uh, what we need to do is we have to create four separate nodes using uh, this uh, created uh, virtual box but before that we have to make certain changes in order to uh, we don't have to i mean keep on making all the changes on all the nodes so what i'll do i'll make the necessary changes like uh, we'll creating a users and uh, uh, like grid users and oracle users and there are some prerequisites like uh, uh, there are few binaries are also required or you can say rpms are required so all these things will be taking care in the first node itself and then we'll try to do the cloning and uh, okay and so this is my system requirement and uh, under that you can see th this is uh, required for uh, if you want to uh, perform the oracle 19c installation there is a one predefined package called oracle database pre-install 19c and you can install this package it will take care of about all the uh, necessary packages related to your installation uh, but as you are already installing your oracle linux operating system 7.8 or later uh, so it will have most of the um, rpms so basically uh, this will uh, provide the additional rpm which is missing for your 19c installation okay so what i'll do i'll connect through my mobile extreme and we'll try to uh, make all the necessary changes so what will uh, we have to do is first provide the ip address of this server 131 is my node node one and from here i'll connect through the root users so you need to provide the root password so let me just clear the screen first 
so again you can see that it is now able to connect to my host prod one uh, what i'll do i'll make all the changes i'll copy all the commands on my uh, notepad from there i'll be per performing these operations so first we'll install the uh, um, oracle 19c pre-installation package so we'll copy these commands and we'll try to execute it okay so basically uh, we are facing uh, some challenge in terms of um, yum repository so let me just fix this out and uh, then we'll perform the installation so guys we have uh, made little bit of changes in my network configuration files uh, with basically the uh, broadcasting uh, this ip in in this segment we have to provide the default gateway in order to uh, connect to the internet so so we have provided the uh, we have made the necessary changes and taken the network restart and after that it is able to perform the installation of these packages so here you can see installation of these packages is happening and now it is uh, up, up installing the necessary packages so all the required packages are getting installed so with this packages is installed and now what we need to do is we have to basically create certain uh, directories as well as like uh, uh, we have to perform user creation so also we have to install oracle asm support uh, packages so i'll copy these packages i mean i'll copy the commands and uh, right yes so it is successfully applied next thing we have to execute this command is ctl hyphen p in order to make uh, some changes in uh, kernel ctl hyphen p because of some space issues it got failed so next we have to do is uh, i mean cross verify these files also so all necessary changes is done or not let me just uh, run the cat command so here you can see all the network related related files and all these changes is happened as so the kernel parameters are also uh, in place okay next we'll do we'll create a groups for uh, this installation so we'll try to copy these commands and execute it So we'll create these groups and uh, so most of these O install and DBA, these are these groups are already exist because of this installation package that we have installed uh, during the initial phase. So these commands will automatically create uh, Oracle users and create some uh, prerequisite groups. Okay, and uh, next we have to create a uh, I mean uh, grid users. So I'll copy this command to create a grid users. So both my Oracle and grid user is created successfully. And also we can provide or assign these groups, which is already there. So next thing we have to do is modify the password for Oracle and grid users. So keep the password small or uh, password which you can remember so i modify the oracle user password similarly we have to modify for grid also so we'll modify grid user password as well so both the passwords is successfully set and next we th uh, next thing we have to add uh, some details inside these files so this is basically a limit file that defines there is a soft and hard limit for a number of processes and other values so in this file we have to basically make an entry for oracle and grid users so what i'll do i'll copy these commands from here and uh, these values and we'll paste this inside these files you can take the backup of these files if you are doing some production level changes so that will be a always a good idea to follow so here we have uh, pasted these values and uh, next thing that we need to do is we have to create all the necessary directories and uh, provide the 
recursive permissions on these files. So basically, yeah, our grid software will be kept in U01 mount points and uh, Oracle RDBMS software will be kept on U02 mount points. So we'll create this directory and this will be my Oracle RDBMS homes and this will be my grid home. Okay, and this is my Aura inventory location. And uh, this will be my, um, I mean, we have to provide the grid and Oracle uh, permissions. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll uh, additionally, we have to basically create a, uh, one location on U01 or U02 for, I mean, we'll use later for patching purpose also. So what I'll do, I'll create it right away mkdir hyphen p which will create a recursively uh, file so latest patch so with this name will be uh, i mean creating those files and so it will copy all these commands and i'll directly paste on the my so we can we can uh, directly run ls hyphen lrt command so you can see whether these files exist, yes, it is exist. Fine. So after that, we have to basically set the bash profile. So what we have to do is uh, on node one, we have to set it like ASM one and prod one for RDBMS. So this will be my grade profile. So what I'll do, I'll copy this file and I'll log into grid users, su hyphen grid. And from here, I'll do what I'll just uh, run the vi command for bash profile and at the end i'll make these entries okay so this will have my grid home locations or grid base all these informations are in this file so we have modified it and similarly we have to uh, make changes for oracle user also so i'll log into oracle user and i'll copy these commands for bash profile entry remember guys we have to modify it for every uh, i mean uh, every each of the nodes that we will be creating like uh, prod one prod two prod three uh, sorry as stand by one and stand by two so we have to make an adjustment in these profiles in order to i mean use it correctively okay so we'll paste this uh, input so here my oracle home will be u02 app these locations so and uh, we'll we'll save this file uh, additionally what you can do is you can run the bash profile once again and uh, try to see if your environment variable is properly set or not so env grep by using grep command you can check out the aura, aura in, uh, values so here we can see oracle sid is prod one and this is my base location and apart from that oracle home is this path okay so that means our uh, this uh, initial configuration is done and uh, what I'll, we need to do now we have to just i'll go back to my uh, main slide so here we can see system prerequisites and under that we have performed these certain operations okay and uh, we have also created these files and um, modified the limit.conf file and we have i mean created this location for keeping our softwares on these paths okay and uh, apart from that we have also set the bash profile so all these steps we have covered so far okay and the network file is already uh, so basically we have to make an entry for uh, network related file changes inside etc host okay what i'll do i'll go back to my uh, text pad from here i'll copy these entries we, we have to make it inside uh, we have to copy inside etc host file and uh, okay so what it, it does is it will uh, have the all the node informations like uh, this will be my uh, prod one this will be prod two private ips public ips okay virtual ips and scan ips so what i'll do i'll copy these files uh, sorry these entries and i'll uh, paste it out inside etc host okay here already the two entries are there you can remove it and paste the entries that i've mentioned in the file okay so so far so good you can again 
cross verify these values so run the cat commands and get the get it verified so when we set up the node 2 that is prod 2 in our case uh, then we'll try to ping the node 1 and node 2 vice versa so i will come to know whether these uh, uh, nodes are reachable or not uh, so i hope you guys are enjoying this entire tutorial and our uh, our aim is to configure a two node rack uh, data guard so for that we are configuring the initial uh, changes in the system and um, I, I don't know uh, how many videos are there uh, with such a deep uh, i mean um, a a deeper level of uh, uh, information so i hope you guys are enjoying please uh, if you are new on my youtube channel please subscribe this will definitely going to help you out so without wasting much time we'll move further so we have made the network level changes okay and uh, what we have to do again and we have to disable the firewall and sometimes during the time of installation firewall causes an issue so we'll disable these uh, firewall entries so let me just uh, run this command using this system ctl command you can uh, perform the um, you can stop your fire firewalls and uh, you can remove the entries also so we have stopped it and disabled it so that it will not uh, start again. So next thing we have to do is we have to enable the cron crony D dot services. So as a part of your installation prerequisite, you need to perform these operations. Okay. And uh, let me just execute this to command also. Okay, so by this time uh, we are very good with, uh, I mean, um, ready with our node one configuration. And uh, what I'll do, I'll stop the node one, prod one, and we have to basically make a four copies, a three different, uh, three more copies, uh, like prod two, standby one, standby two, and make the necessary changes like host name we have to modify because uh, host name which we have chosen during the time of installation that is uh, used for uh, prod one and subsequently we have to make the necessary changes for prod one standby one standby two okay so all these steps will be covering so uh, meanwhile i'll stop my uh, system just we have to run the init dot zero and it will stop the system from we'll go back to our virtual box settings from here we can run the clone commands from clone you need to just basically mention the clone name so here we have prod2 and you need to generate the new mac ip mac address so that all the networks will be refreshed so click next tab or here and you have to perform the full cloning okay and click clone so it will basically create a duplicate a replica of your prod one so we don't have to perform the operating system installation once again and uh, all the necessary all the changes that we have done in prod one automatically reflect on the prod two prod and standby one standby two so my second node is also ready and similarly we will modify uh, make a clone for uh, standby one standby two so what i'll do i'll uh, stby one so we have provided the uh, name and uh, locations and we have selected the generate a new mac address for all the network adapters so we'll click next tab and we have to do the full clonings so within a few minutes it will clone the this existing uh, prod one to stby one remember guys we are uh, just uh, making a clone of uh, and it, its naming convention is basically based upon the virtual box settings so inside the operating system all the changes that we have done in, in i mean whatever the pre predefined changes are there so it will keep as it is so we have to modify those changes like host name and all those information we'll do it later okay now it is doing the cloning for uh, from prod one to standby one we haven't performed any um, software level changes like uh, we don't have we haven't uh, done anything like grid installation on or rdbms software installation this is basically a cloning of your operating system and some prerequisite like operating system prerequisite so let this uh, cloning finishes and then we'll discuss further okay so now guys all 
all the four nodes are ready like prod one prod two standby one standby two okay so all these uh, i mean you can see the base memory and processor all everything is uh, cloned okay so what we have to do is we have to start the one uh, no, uh, one node at a time and uh, we have to make the necessary changes okay so let me just start the prod two and we'll modify the changes so now we're logging through the root user on uh, prod two and uh, we'll make the necessary changes that is required so by logging to the root users and uh, a welcome page will again open up and we have to modify the network changes and host names so we are already ready with the commands so let me just ignore the so we have to basically come to wired settings from here we have to basically modify these uh, ips so this is my prod to that means it will be a 72 and uh, again the gateway will be zero 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 and these settings will be automatically and we have to basically apply these changes so again once again you have to verify it so it is 72 but it is still reflecting that means you need to restart it and it will automatically pick up during the next startup okay from here we have to modify the private ip to 10.2 and all the remaining changes will as it is again we have to restart it and uh, and the second uh, sorry the third network uh, it will be used for connecting through outside world so let me just make it 132 and uh, apply the changes and again we'll restart it so that it will be reflecting so here we can see all the ips are now getting reflected so it is 72 and this is 132 okay now we can connect it through outside and uh, we'll do it don't worry about it <clears throat> so what i'll do i'll go back to mobile extreme and from here i'll once again i'll connect to 132 sessions so let me just type the ips so this is 192.168.0.132 and this is root users from here we need to provide the password let me just clear the screen once again for you so here <clears throat> we can see the host name as a uh, prod one so basically we have to modify it to prod two okay what we'll do we'll copy this command nmcli general so basically this command provides the host name and with this command we can modify the host name so <clears throat> execute these commands and uh, you can verify it once again by executing these commands nmcli general host name it will provide the host name as a prod2.local domain and uh, next thing you have to do is service ctm restart so you can restart the service of uh, host name so but don't worry will i mean these changes will be reflecting during the next startup so you don't have to worry about these things and uh, this is done uh, apart from that uh, we need to modify the mass profile for grid users so all grid and uh, other users that is oracle users so let me just run the vi command for bash profile so here my oracle sid will be asm2 so this will be my second node that's why it will be a, asm2 so we'll make the changes in the bash profile for oracle user also sorry let me just uh, vi the bash profile and uh, this will be my prod two so i need to remove one and replace it with two so once again we'll save these values and you can uh, run these commands and uh, verify it so here it is reflecting as prod2 that means this will be my second instance for production and this is done okay what you can do is we can restart and you can verify it like host name and all those information and similarly we have to do it for 
I mean, uh, we have to do it for standby one and standby two. But in this case, we have to basically modify the network because uh, because the network uh, configuration on standby will be something like this. So my uh, IPs will be changed with like uh, for private IP, it will be uh, uh, 192.168.10.3. And uh, so for standby two, that is no two for standby, it will be four. And likewise, we will be increasing the IP addresses. So public IP, it will be 73 and 74 and virtual IPs like 83 and 84 and uh, 94. 9596 for your scan IPs. Okay, so this will be my stand by side networking configuration. And uh, in this, this uh, file also in main, uh, this document also you can see that I, I've used these IPs. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just uh, log in um, to my console and uh, sorry, on the virtual machine and we'll try to modify i think it is already uh, modified i just modified it few minutes back so we have to basically make these ips as for uh, this will be used for your public ips okay and uh, here you can see it is uh, 192.168.56.73 and uh, this is my net net mask and so once you apply it you just uh, restart these networks otherwise it will not reflect similarly this is my private ip for um, standby node one okay and uh, so i'll just close this out and i'll go back to standby node two also uh, so this is my standby stb to machine and here you can see that my network file and network uh, details are also there so here in the under the network you can see this is my ip address that is a uh, 192.168.56.74 so i just you can modify this these parts okay and uh, similarly we have the network configuration for private ips as well okay so so if you see the original um, network detail of uh, my uh, primary site so this was my primary site network configuration so here we have just added uh, uh, additional two ips in the same segments okay so what ha happens that a virtual network will be created so guys what i'll do i'll just add these ips in my etc host uh, file for standby sites so let me just add these ips so simply you just have to copy these files from uh, so these entries and uh, i'll go to my console and uh, i'll show you how how to modify it so let me just uh, edc slash host from this location okay so simply you just remove the existing entry and paste the new entry and uh, just save these files okay so one more thing you can just run the cat com command as, as well to verify it okay so th this these are my entries okay so here you can see that uh, this is uh 10 dot 3 10.4 and similarly it is 73 74 83 84 and 94 90, 95 and 96 okay and if you go back to your let me just uh, show you the details and uh, if you run these commands cat etc etc host so on the primary side you can see that primary side uh, these are your entries okay and on standby sites these are the your entries okay so similarly we have to modify a second node as well on the standby so just uh, etc and etc host we add this file and it has the network information so remove the existing entries and once again i'll just copy these entries so let me just copy it i need to just uh, paste this okay so i just pasted this one and uh, just save these files okay and you can run the cat command once again to verify these details so this is your entry okay and uh, what you can do is you can just run the ping command uh, between uh, stb1 and stb2 stby1 so you're from stby2 <clears throat> we are performing the ping and it is working fine similarly for your private uh, ips also you can run this ping command so this is happening for properly from uh, standby node 2 to standby 1 so and the reverse we have to run the from sorry 
from standby node one, we have to ping uh, standby node two. Let me just uh, execute the commands and it is also able to ping. And similarly, we have to ping the private network also. It is also pingable. That means our network uh, has been established between um, 141, that is uh, standby node one and standby node two, 142 servers. Okay. So and our prerequisites for uh, this uh, network configuration is all done for both uh, primary as well as standby side. Okay. And so next thing that we need to do that we need to do is we have to create a shared storage for both the primary as well as standby side. So if you go back to our initial slide, so let me just go back. So this is the shared storage that will be used for ASM purpose. So it will store your uh, data file and all other files. Okay. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to basically uh, uh, configure this shared storage. And uh, so step number seven, eight is creating a shared storage. And uh, I have created a videos also in previous uh, tutorials. So you can refer those video for a complete detail how to create a shared storage for your uh, ASM and all. So what I'll do, I'll create and uh, I will attach the shared storage to both the primary site as well as uh, standby sites. And uh, these are the basic steps that we need to do. Okay. And you can refer these links in the description and uh, I'll provide those links. Okay. So for the timing, I'll pause this video and, and I'll configure the shared storage. So guys, I'm back and uh, you can see my screen and uh, here uh, node one, this is prod one and this one is prod two. This is my standby one and this one is standby two. And here all you can see is ASM disks are uh, available. So these ASM one uh, disks are available. I mean, these are shared between these two and uh, these ASM disks are shared between other node two. So that means as for our uh, plan of action, we reached till step number eight and we have successfully created ASM disk, uh, which is uh, shared across the uh, like a primary uh, site as well as, uh, and separately we have created for the, uh, standby side also okay so i'll just to go through uh, our architecture diagram so here we can see this is my prod one this is my prod two and this is my shared storage that we are seeing on the node one and node two this is prod one prod two and similarly we have uh, like uh, we have also created a shared storage which is shared between 141 that is standby one and standby two so these two are okay so these two these three uh, disks are uh, are of size around uh, 10 12 gigs uh, first one is 12 gig this was 10 10 gigs and this one is uh, again the 10 gigs okay so we'll be using it for like data uh, data disk group and uh, this is used for uh, ocr disk group and one is for archive so based uh, this way you can uh, create uh, three separate disk groups and you can give the naming convention you can use these commands that we have mentioned on the uh, this uh, steps okay so you can refer my previous video also i'll provide the links you can uh, go through that link and you can configure the shared storage so uh, at this time our system is ready for the installation and uh, what we need to do is we have to basically copy the software like grid and the rdbms software unzipped in the respective homes like a uh, grid home and uh, oracle home so basically what i'll do i'll first uh, configure this uh, rag database and the grid configuration on prod side and later we'll be doing for the standby side okay so uh, i'll what i'll quickly do i'll copy the software and uh, unzip it and then we can start with the installation meanwhile i'll pause this video and uh, again i'm requesting all the new friends to please subscribe the youtube my channels and uh, keep watching and keep learning guys so guys at this junction we have uh, i mean we have reached till uh, this point that is uh, uh, we we are uh, we have configured the passwordless ssh for the grid user between uh, prod1 and prod2 these are my host names so uh, between these two host uh, there will be no password required for login in between so uh, for grid user also i have done uh, from this location we need to go to this location cd uh, grid home location under that there is a directory called uh, deinstall from there we will get this 
SSH setup, SSH user setup dot SSH file, and we have to basically execute these files, and it will create a configuration between the, I mean, passwordless configuration between these two nodes. Similarly, for the Oracle users, also we have to do, and we we need to log into this. Uh, uh, we we have to go to the. Uh, software location of our Oracle home location and under that there is a deinstall file again the same file um, the only thing we are changing here is Oracle user so great instead of grid user we are mentioning the Oracle user so by using these commands I uh, created a passwordless SSH between these two nodes so let me just uh, show you once again so what I'll do I'll switch to grid users from here and I'll try to uh, so from prod one, I just uh, switch to uh, SSH to prod two, and again from uh, prod two to I just reversed uh, SSH prod one, so it is working fine. So similarly, we need to check for uh, <clears throat> we need to cross verify for Oracle user as well. So I'll what I'll do, I'll just uh, verify for Oracle user also, and uh, let me just. <laughs> SSH to node 2 that is prod 2 in this case. So it is happening properly. And reverse is also working. Similarly, similarly, what I did is I just created for as root user also. So using the same script, you can I mean refer to root user as well. So here you can see it is able to so and the same thing I, I have done for the standby side also and uh, here also you can uh, perform the same operations that uh, we have seen on the primary side so i'll switch to grid user from here i'll run ssh stby2 that is our second node in case of standby so again i'll ssh to stby1 Okay, so it is working fine, perfectly. Okay, so our passwordless uh, configuration is successfully completed. And next uh, thing that we need to do is we have to install the grid software and Oracle softwares. So we'll use the standard uh, method of uh, doing the installation that we have uh, done so far in this video. And, and now what I'll do, I'll just uh, I'll uh, go through the main main steps and we will not uh, look at all the steps uh, in case of uh, grid installation and uh, um, RDBMS software installation. Uh, you, if you want, uh, you can watch my previous video, how to install uh, Oracle 19C RAG database. So I have covered everything from scratch and on that, that video also, you can refer that video. I'll provide the links in the description. Meanwhile, I'll requesting all the friends uh, to subscribe YouTube channels. If you haven't done yet okay so let's uh, move further uh, now we have to basically log in through grid users and um, by logging uh, going to this oracle home directory so uh, first what i'll do i'll uh, configure the grid on primary sites and later we'll do doing the same thing on the secondary side also so <clears throat> i'll just uh, log in through grid users since we are using the mobile x team uh, we we have we we can directly connect to the grid users so what I'll do, I'll just uh, run this. I'll type the IP 192.168.0.131. This is my node one. Okay. this path as well as i just updated the opatch uh, uh, version also so you need to uh, take care of all these things uh, if you want to learn this 
how to do these tasks you can refer my previous video i just covered everything in, the, in those videos also so opatch version is updated to the latest version from here what i'll do i'll uh, uh, use the command apply are you options over there so uh, using uh, apply are you you can directly perform the latest patch installation and along with that you can do the installation so first the patch will be applied to this oracle home then binary relinking will happen so what i'll do i'll I just need to execute this command so we are installing um, grid on the primary side first then we'll doing the same thing on the standby location also okay but in case of primary we will be creating a prod database but on standby will not create any database okay that is the only difference and later we'll be configuring the standby manually okay so uh, for the time wing we'll execute the grid setup dot ss file by logging to going to this oracle home location and using the apply are you will be applying the latest patch which is kept on this path okay so i come came to this location let me just uh, clear the screen first so we'll execute this command and we'll start the installation okay let me just recheck i guess something is missing okay so we are on the opatch location because of that it is giving me the error so let's uh, rerun and uh, by executing these commands so my both nodes are running so all the installation will happen in the background from node 1 to node 2 and all those things so initially it is doing the patching and once the patching will finish then it will uh, provide me the um, graphical interface for grid in infrastructure configuration so meanwhile what i'll do i'll pause this video and uh, uh, once this patching is over then i will see how to configure the grid on the primary sides and um, i will not see how to do, do the same thing on the uh, standby location what i'll do i'll uh, um, finish the primary uh, side grid configuration and i will skip the standby uh, side grid configuration okay so you will be familiar with the steps which we are performing on the primary side so you don't have to worry about the standby side okay we'll doing the same thing you uh, we will try to save the maximum time on this video okay so let's uh, wait for some time so and we'll uh, we'll catch up later okay so i'll pause this video so the patch is uh, successfully installed and now it is asking me to configure the uh, grid infrastructure so here yeah, the first screen is for configuration options so there are basically uh, three uh, total four options are there so the config first option is configure the oracle grid infrastructure for new cluster that is the we are using and there is a standalone uh, server that is oracle restart configuration so if you want to learn how to perform i mean how to configure a standalone server you can refer my previous video well, we, we will be doing the oracle grid infrastructure installation and this is not upgrade so we'll skip this also and we are configuring the actual grid so we'll sele select the first option by default it is first one only and uh, cl just click on the next tab and here it is asking me uh, choose a required cluster configuration so uh, here <coughs> basically uh, standalone cluster we are choosing okay so click on the next it is asking me the create local scan name so what is your cluster name so let me just uh, cluster name will be prod cluster and it will be scan name will be prod scan so based upon the details that we have on the etc host I uh, will try to cut the file slash etc slash host. Okay, from there we can get the information. So our scan name is prod hyphen scan. So we'll use this option only. Let me just put uh, right away. So it is the prod scan. Okay, and uh, port will be one five two one. That is uh, we are using the default one. Okay, we will we'll not configure the G GNS in this uh, case. So we'll skip these options and just click on the next tab over here and uh, now it is validating the scan name whether it exists in the network file or not so from there it is it has automatically picked up the public host name as well as the virtual host name so if you can see the detail about the etc host from here you can see that uh, prod1.local domain this is my public host name and this is my virtual host name for this uh, <coughs> 
sorry this one virtual host name for prod one okay so we have to basically add the entry for node two as well so it is uh, we have to provide the public name for prod two so we'll select the and put it uh, here so this is done similarly we have to choose for public domain as well so we'll paste these values just click ok and now we have the two nodes okay so we can we have to basically uh, cross check the ssh connectivity so this is the grid users from which we are performing the installation just provide the password for grid and it will test um, the passwordless ssh connectivity if it is already not done then it will we can select the setup option also there so it will automatically uh, perform the passwordless ssh configuration okay so we'll wait for the results so it should uh, successfully uh, complete the passwordless ssh with connectivity between the two nodes and uh, <clears throat> once this is done yeah so here it is successfully completed so we we'll click next again so now it is validating all the nodes and all those informations remember guys we are uh, configuring the two node rack data guard configuration so for the that we we have to basically go through all these steps that is uh, we we need to basically set up the both the primary side as well as the standby side so both will be a two node uh, rack database and here is the options like uh, use flex is asm or the shared file system so we'll be using the flex asm uh, storage for okay so next thing it is asking me to configure the grid infrastructure management repository so we'll choose the default option that is no um, and the very next page it is asking me to select the ocr and voting uh, voting disk data that will be stored in the following asm disk group select the disk and the characters characteristics of the disk groups okay so the characteristic basically define the redundancy and all these units so we'll choose the external redundancy so we don't have have to worry about the um, number of uh, disk uh, for uh, co this configuration so here we have to basically choose the disk discovery uh, path so for from here it we have to provide the oracle asm slash disk okay so it will automatically fetch all the disk related to so here we can see all the three disks that we have created during uh, storage configuration said storage configuration so what i'll do i'll select the one of the 10 gb of uh, disk and we'll use it as a ocr okay ocr disk group sorry ocr okay so it is external redundancy and 10 gb of size so we'll click on the next tab and here it is asking me to create a password for sys and asm um, snmp so what i'll do i'll pro provide the same password for both the users and uh, we should keep the password uh, such a, such that will uh, we will be able to remember it later okay so i just provided the small password so it will give me warnings we can ignore it but not the be best practice so next uh, next thing you can see it is asking me to uh, provide the failure failure isolation so uh, here it is default option will go with default one and the next is um, enterprise manager cloud control information so we'll skip this also and very next page it is asking me detail about the oracle asm administrator group so i uh, will stick to the o install group so all these information will since o install is my primary group i'll stick to this only and it will give me a warning i'll skip it next thing we we have to provide the oracle base so this is my base location and this will be my software location so click on next so this will be my aura inventory location And the very next page, it is asking me whether you want uh, to execute the root 
scripts using uh, automatic options or you want to execute it manually so you can provide the uh, root password over here and it will automatically do uh, the jobs for you and so what i'll do i'll prefer to execute it manually so that we can ratify if there is any issues so click next now it will analyze the systems and um, it will do the some pre-checks and once that is finished then it will provide me the summary of the details and uh, we can start the installation we are configuring the grid infrastructure on the primary side later we have to do the same thing for the standby also but in case of primary we will be creating a database and for standby we will, we will not create the database basically we will be performing the configuration of data guard so uh, it will automatically done through the data guard configuration so basically we have to basically take care about the software installation that is a grid as well as rdbms so there in, on this uh, prerequisite checks uh, there will be uh, some warnings if it is not critical we can skip those warnings and we can perform the installation so here is the case so it is asking me uh, so physical memory is little lower so we can skip it this is uh, this is also warning state we can these are fixable so let me just try to fix and check again so we have to basically execute these scripts using root users okay so open the terminal window or root and execute these commands for one by one so this is done on node one similarly we have to do for node 2 as well so what i'll do i'll execute it from node 2 as well so it is done let me just to go back to the installation page just click ok and it will run it once again and here you can see there are a few warnings that is removed and now the next page it is uh, giving me warning for dns as well as resolve.conf so we can skip this uh, because we are using the ip based configuration so nothing to worry about just click ignore all and move to the next page and here the installation summary will become and you can start the installation you can monitor it so what i'll do i'll just uh, pause this video at this junction once the installation will finished then we'll discuss further okay after this installation we have to basically install rdbms software as well so <clears throat> i'll show the, those step as well so don't worry about it let the grid inst infrastructure installation finish then we'll discuss it okay so guys i will show you uh, current status so here we can see it is it has asked me to execute the uh, this uh, aura nst root.sh and root.sh file so i just executed it on the node 1 first and then node 2 and okay so here you can see the root.sh file got executed successfully and uh, see root.sh file executed and all, it has configured the uh, crs on node 1 uh, similarly we have executed in node 2 as well so here you can see uh, aura nst root.sh root and then root.sh file so with this our configuration part from a uh, great point of view is completed at least so we'll click ok now so it will proceed further okay it will do the remaining uh, configuration part for grid on the primary sides so still my standby side we haven't touched anything and we will be doing it later once the primary side is ready so we are just configuring the primary side so yeah so as of now you can see ps ef grep command also so from ps ef grep you can verify your whether your uh, pmon is running or not related to asm so here it, you can see pmon is running and also d dot bin you can execute so you can come to know whether my grid is up and running so grid infrastructure is already up and running on node 1 similarly we can do it on node 2 as well so if you run this command on node 2 here you can see the same thing asm2 is up and running okay d dot bean so what i can do is at this junction i can execute the 
CRSCTL command also from that we can come to know whether CRSCTL check CRS or you can run the check cluster status. So overall the cluster status will come in on this. Uh, so here you can see the prod one and prod two, both the clusters are configured. And similarly, what we need to do is we will go back to our uh, installation page. So here it, it is still not finished. It is doing some, um, I mean, uh, uh, the remaining configuration part it is doing. So it is verifying whether all the you know, these um, services are started or not. So all this is uh, let the, uh, this finish and then also CRSETL stat resource hyphen t so it will give the tabular details such as listener services which is up and running on prod one prod two and all those informations so we have already seen these videos in our previous tutorial that is oracle 19c rack installation so all the services you can see like uh, scan asm1 and uh, scan listener one scan listener two all these are uh, live online on the node one node two okay so all this configuration is done and we'll go back to our final page so because of uh, that we have skipped the result.conf and uh, dns file so because of that it will give you a final result as a warning because it it failed to check those configurations so it it doesn't make any difference you can click on okay and it will be finished okay so at this junction you click on skip so all this part is over so at this junction our cluster is ready on node uh, sorry primary sites so we'll cl click on close okay so we have already seen this status so all the services are online on prod one prod two so our primary cluster uh, i mean grid infrastructure configuration is completed and next thing we need to do is we have to basically create a um, disk group for our data file restoration as well as uh, archive location so I, what i'll do i'll execute asmca command asmca what it does is it will uh, provide you the graphical interface for creation of disk groups so i'll execute asmca and it will pop up the um, graphical interface for a new disk group creation from the grid user you have to execute it okay so this is my oracle 19c so here you can see the disk group names so it is ocr is the default which we have created during the installation so we need to create uh, click on create and you have to provide the name for the new disk group which you wanted to create so it will give the name as a data and you have to choose the external redundancy and in case of external redundancy it doesn't ask you for the additional disk group disks for configuration so we'll for the data will keep around 12 gigs okay just click okay and it will automatically create a new disk group for your data disk group okay so click okay now it is creating the new disk group similarly we have to create a archive disk group also So this is over and the next thing we have to do is for archive also so we'll give the name as archive choose uh, so click ok again it is of 10 gb so at this junction uh, we should have ready with the three disk groups one is data disk group one is ocr one is archive okay same things we have to do on the standby location standby side also so i'll not show the video related to standby configuration i mean um, this grid infrastructure installation and rdbms we will skip those part in this video so don't worry about that we'll now click exit so my disk groups are ready and this is mounted on both the nodes okay so click okay exit yes so now what uh, next task is to ins install the rdbms software so on the primary side we have completed the grid infrastructure installation now we have to do the rdbms software installation through oracle users and we have to create one rack database which is a name of prod okay so by using the run installer a hyphen apply are you we will apply the latest patch on the rdbms home as well as we'll be configuring the rdbms software so first thing we have to do is we have to log in through Oracle users on primary side that is uh, node 10131 server 
okay next we have to provide the username oracle so let me just provide the username and you need to provide the password just clear the screen okay x authentication is not there okay let me just check okay okay not good. so we have to basically go to oracle home location over here so we'll go to oracle home now from here i'll check whether my run installer file is available yes we have already i mean um, unzip this software and we have upgraded our opatch utility to the latest version also so we don't have to worry about using the same patch that is available on the uh, this path we will be installing the rdbms software so using the same bundle patch that is available so this is the grid patch that is we will be using for rdbms installation also so the unnecessary patches will be skipped so don't worry about that from oracle user we will be executing this command so let's execute it and from the node one of primary side we will be configuring the so now you can see it is uh, applying the latest patch on rdbms homes once this is finished then it will perform the it will show me the uh, rdbms installation graphical interface so meanwhile i'll pause this video and then we'll see it later once the patch is apply is over okay so now guys we can see that the patch is successfully applied and it is asking me to perform the rdbms software installation okay so uh, we will be configuring the so we'll be set up the software only create a configure database so we'll select the setup software only so that uh, we'll create the database later just click next tab over here we have the two options like single instance database installation or rack database so we'll stick to the oracle real application cluster database installation so just click next here the two nodes are automatically selected and uh, click next again it will verify the um, setup details okay so you don't have to do anything over here uh, it will automatically do the uh, so basically it is uh, verifying whether your nodes are reachable or not and whether the passwordless configuration is already done or not so it is already done and now it is asking me uh, what kind of database installation you want to do so database edition we will selecting the enterprise edition click next and this will be your aura base so this is your oracle software location click next so here we have to provide the various uh, group details so we'll stick to the o install group that is our primary group and you can modify it as per your requirements click next whether you want to execute the script manually so we'll click next we'll execute sorry that was the automatic option so we'll execute it manually and now it is doing the pre-checks once this is over then we'll get the summary page and uh, our installation of rdbms software on the primary side we are doing so still the same thing we have to do on the standby side also okay so remember guys our target was to uh, I mean, um, configure a two node rack uh, data guard for which we are preparing our primary sites. Uh, once this is done, then we'll be doing the same thing for standby also. Apart from uh, that, we will not be creating any database on the standby sites. Okay. So, if you are already familiar with these steps, you can directly jump to the next step that is. Uh, data guard configuration in two node rack so as a what i i just wanted to i mean provide the information to the all the new guys who who has begun uh, i mean who was who who is learning 
Oracle database from scratch. So for them, I just uh, made this video from the start to end. So here we have to again option of uh, ignoring this result.conf and uh, DNS option. So we'll click next. Now I'll start the installation. It should not take much time. Basically, it will uh, relink the binaries and it will copy those software on remote locations. So uh, meanwhile, I'll pause this video once this is finished, then uh, I'll discuss further. So guys, we can see that it is now asking me to execute the root.ss file on prod1, prod2. So I'll execute it one by one. So just run the SH command. So again, it is done on the prod1 as well as we have to do is for the prod2 as well. So SH. So this is also done. We just click on OK now. So with this, your RDBMS software installation is over. OK, on both the primary uh, prod one as well as prod two. So you can run the SQL plus command also over here. So you'll get the output. So here you can see it is the 11, 19.11 .11 version. So similarly, you can verify node two also that is prod two. So using su hyphen Oracle and then run the SQL plus hyphen V. So it will provide you the version. So with this, our RDBMS software is also install uh, successfully uh, done uh, installation. So now what I'll do, I'll create the database that is our prod database, prod one, prod two instances. Okay. So using the DBCA, we will be configuring our database. So now we have the option of create database or manage template. So we'll select the create database, click next. Here two options like typical and uh, advanced configuration. So we'll go with the advanced tab. So let the initialization finish, then we'll see. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, this video. If you are able to understand from this video please click on like button if you have any questions so far you can mention me in the comment box i'll definitely try to help you and if if you want a further assistant you can send me an email i, I provided the email in the descriptions okay so click next over here and we have the options like database type and uh, uh, configuration type so we'll stick to the default options so we, we we are just configuring that real application cluster so rag database type so uh, general purpose or the transaction processing database click next so we have the two nodes already set up so we'll click next again it will verify the passwordless ssh connectivity and all those things so here the option of database name so we we have to choose the database name as a prod so that it will be used for a production side so we'll keep the name as prod. So SID prefix is prod. That means it will create two separate instances, prod one, prod two. Okay. So we'll keep the SID prefix as a prod, not prod one. Okay. So we'll click prod and we'll not create a container database. If you, if you have a requirement, you can create it out. So uh, I'll not choose the create container database. So click next on this page. We have to basically provide the storage information. So here you can see the, it is automatically picked up your ASM con, uh, data file management. So from there it is, uh, uh, you can see the data plus data dis, uh, dis groups. So the, automatically it is uh, chosen the uh, Oracle managed file. So MF options. Okay. Just click next. If you, if you don't have the ASM configuration, you can use a file base file system, but it is not recommended in case of rag database, you have to be stick to ASM configuration. So next we have the option of selecting a fast recovery area and enabling the archive logs. So you can enable it on this here only, or you can, uh, I mean, enable the archive log also. So we'll click next. Sorry, let me just go back once again, we have to modify this um fast recovery area as an archive location because uh, okay so we have modified it also you can modify these values but uh, let it as it is so click next 
the next option is uh, select the data vault configuration so we'll not touch anything as of now these are the advanced database security options we can select okay so next we have to provide the um, shared memory management so we have the memory like um, 2.2 gb by default it has picked based upon your available memory on the servers so what i'll try to do i'll re just uh, reduce this value to uh, around 1.8 mb sorry 1.8 gb okay so keep it somewhere around 18 to 60 and uh, number of processes you can define character set and uh, connect connection modes like dedicated or the shared server so so we'll uh, select the default options over here we, we don't want it to make any complication over here so here again the next thing is like um, checking your um, installing uh, em database express so we'll skip those options uh, run the cluster verification utility check periodically we'll skip this also if you have the oms uh, host uh, details so you can mention on on this page so it will automatically uh, configure with the oms server okay so we'll skip these parts but you can do uh, as per your requirements there's no hard and fast rule that you should skip these parts just click next and now it is asking me to provide the password for sys and system users so i'll choose this, both the password similar in order to manage it better way so let me just provide the password and uh, both password i'll keep the same just click next it will provide the warnings because of small password now it is uh, giving me the location where um post uh, db scripts uh, is kept you you can execute it okay so I'll, and just um, move to the next part will not go much deeper in these things so it is uh, specified archive is less than the recommended value let me just okay no problem let's uh, move ahead and we'll see what happens next okay So now a database creation will happen and once the database creation will finished on primary sites then we'll start quickly with the installation of grid as well as rdbms software on the standby sites so i'll not uh, i will not record those parts in this video i'll skip that that part but the logic is same that we have done so far like um, grid infrastructure installation then rdbms software installations okay but we'll not create a database on standby sites so you know all again the same warning that we we are facing since the start so click next click on yes tab and now we have the summary just click next finish and your database configuration will start i mean database creation actually so you can monitor this uh, through the details as well as after some time it will automatically uh, provide you alert log location as well so you can monitor your alert log also so let me just uh, tell this output file where the database configuration is happening so now it is uh, connected to inst instance one prod and all those information it is popping uh, coming up and uh, so <clears throat> we have to be a little patience now you can see the alert log is also came and uh, what it does is uh, basically it will create the uh, instance primary prod one and later it will configure uh, prod two instance also so uh, we can just monitor the alert logs uh, and uh, what happens in the background we can monitor through the alert logs so oh let me just re-execute the commands so <clears throat> so basically it is now creating a database and uh, all the changes in the database happening so we just have to little patience and uh, once this uh, database creation is over i'll show the output and uh, uh, then we'll move further okay so let's just monitor for a few minutes i'll pause this video
so guys my database creation is successfully completed on primary side so here you can see the end screen that is it is successfully configured so just close the button and uh, now what i'll do i'll just uh, run the ps hyphen ef grep pmon so that we can uh, see the status so here we can see the asm is running from the grid user and my production database the, that is a prod one instance running on prod one node one which is our in our case uh, and it is uh, running through the oracle user okay and uh, similarly this is my node one and i'll go to node two also here also you can see ps hyphen e upgrade pmon and the two instances are running one is from the oracle users which is uh, your database instance and this one is a grid uh, user instance that is asm2 and apart from that what we can do is we can verify let me just uh, run the commands like uh, cluster details apart from that you can run crctl stat status resource hyphen t in the tabular format you can get all the informations like uh, all the listeners which is online network configurations archive uh, disk groups okay asm listeners data dg disk groups so all these are online on the respective nodes and it is in the stable state and uh, scan listeners okay and apart from that prod database instance is also up and running and it is on the host prod and prod 2 this is basically up and running you can see the status okay so that means our configuration on the primary side is over and uh, one more thing we can do is we can switch to oracle users and verify the details by running the srv ctl command so srv ctl status database iphone d then you have to provide the database unique name that is a prod in our case so using this command you can verify and also you can use hyphen verbose options so here we can see that my instance prod one is running on the node prod one okay prod two instance is running on my host prod two so host name could be anything this is my database instance one and two okay and uh, you can also log into oracle database and you can verify the details so sql plus has sys dba so by running a db dot sql file which i already uh, kept on the server so here you can see my database is prod one uh, okay and these are the instance names this is the time when it is started and these are the host name this is prod one dot local domain read write archive log current so all these informations are there okay so the next target uh, uh, for uh, us is uh, similar configuration on the standby sites okay so primary configuration uh, primary site configuration is successfully completed on uh, till this point so we'll move to the next step step number 10 that is the copy the software and unzip this and uh, start the installation on the standby side okay so we'll we have to do the same thing on the standby also so we have already configured the sss passwordless configuration what i'll do i'll perform the grid installation and on top of that we'll execute i mean we'll uh, perform the rdbms software installation once this is done so our inst i mean prerequisites for data guard rag data guard configuration will be ready and then i will discuss further for the time being what i'll do i'll pause this video i'll uh, perform the installation of grid and rdbms software and we'll later see uh, data guard configuration so guys uh, we have completed our uh, installation on the grid side uh, standby sites and you can see that uh, these steps are performed on standby also so we have completed the uh, uh, grid installation as well as uh, rdbms software installation on both this uh, standby node one st stb1 and stb2 and uh, we have already i mean con configured the ssh list password list ssh between stb1 and stb2 and apart from that we have unzipped these softwares and installed the grid software as well as we have installed rdbms software so what i'll do i'll so show you what is the current status so here you can see the cr dot crctl check cluster hyphen all from that you can see this is my stabby stby1 stby2 and from there you can see that my, both the clusters are up and running okay
And the next thing that you can do, you can execute the CRS CTL uh, stat resource iPhone D commands. From there, you can verify these uh, various services, uh, which is uh, currently online and uh, all these st step. Okay, so this is one thing. And similarly, you can run the execute the same commands on node one as well. Uh, sorry, on the pro production side. So let me just uh, go to quickly on this path. From here, I'll execute the same commands that we have executed on um i mean on this uh, standby side so uh, we'll execute it so from here you can uh, currently see the uh, both my clusters uh, crs services are up and on prod one prod two that is node one and node two in this case and uh, so what i'll do i'll just uh, proceed proceed with further uh, with my slides let me just uh, go through and uh, here you can see that uh, so what what we have achieved uh, so far so at this junction, our primary site uh, installation is already completed and uh, my both the database is up and running. So I'll just uh, show you the database status as well. Okay, let me just start the database. I think uh, database was down during the time of installation. So let me just execute this command SRV CTL status database iPhone D, the prod unique name is prod, so it is not running. So what I'll do, I'll start the database first, then we'll discuss further. Okay. So meanwhile, this uh, database get start. So look at the slides. So here you can see that my primary database side has the production database prod, which is uh, we have already started. So it will like up and running. And on standby side, we have just installed the grid and um, we haven't configured the database since we will be doing the data configuration for the primary side okay and uh, next thing that we have to do is data con guard configuration the actual step that we will be doing okay so let me just uh, go to my prompt i'll show you the version of my oracle database software that is installed on this server so sql plus hyphen v Also, you can see that there is only uh, one PMON that is related to um, ASM is up and running. This is my standby look site. Okay, and these are my production sites. So um, the database is also started. So let me just uh, show you the status. So it is up and running. Okay, <clears throat> so you can run ps -EM grep command PMON. So from here, you can see the database is up and running. Okay. What you can do is you can log into the database. You can verify these details. Okay. So executing the DB command. So here, this is my production database, read, write mode, archive log. It is already enabled. This current primary database role is primary and maximum performance. By default, it is showing the maximum performance, the protection mode. So what I'll do, <clears throat> we'll look at the further details like uh, what are the actual steps involved for data guard configuration so guys before i'll proceed i'll request all the friends who haven't subscribed my youtube channel please subscribe on this uh, youtube channel you are already getting so many things to learn and if you have any questions so far you can um, message me in the comment box or you can send me an email i'll try to help you out as soon as possible okay so let's uh, start this further and uh, the actual step for data guard configuration involves like uh, primary side uh, configuration so these are the high level step that we we should be knowing uh, before we proceed so let's uh, look at this data first so basically, first we have to enable the uh, force login on the primary sites if it is already not done. And the next thing that we have to do is copy the password file from the primary site to the standby sites. Next is configure the standby redo log file on the primary sites. Then we have to verify the archive log modes, whether it is enabled on primary side or not. So next. And uh, then we have to set primary database initialization parameters of uh, data guard configuration. And next, uh, configure the listener entries on the primary sites, configure the TNS entry on the primary sites. So all these steps involved on the primary sites. And similarly, we have to go through uh, various steps on standby side as well, like uh, setting the um, 
initialization parameters then creating required directories on the standby then starting the data uh, standby database in no mount modes and then configuring the static static uh, listener for application so all these steps will be looking at a deeper and so don't worry about that part so let's uh, move further so the very very important uh, steps that uh, for that will be required and uh, this is a very most significant step uh, for our configuration and uh, in this step what we have to do is basically we have to make um, i mean copy the etc host entry from prod to standby sites and from standby site to prod so basically the logic is all the uh, prod instances as well as standby instances all everyone should be knowing the each other nodes okay that will uh, what it will do is it will create a communication between um, all the existing servers okay so what i'll do i'll just uh, go to and uh, one more thing that uh, once you will be copying all these files so each of these nodes will be ping uh, it should be reachable from other nodes so we have to execute this uh, entire commands on all of the four nodes and uh, response would be you know, coming from all the other instances okay so let me just um, go back to my notepad and i'll copy these commands and uh, we'll proceed further okay so from here i'll what i'll do i'll just copy these commands so it has the entry of production side information as well as standby side information so we'll uh, copy these files and i'll uh, paste it out on i mean inside the um, etc host on any of the nodes and from there i'll make the copy to other nodes okay so quickly i'll do this meanwhile i'll pause this uh, i'll be on mute so guys we have already copied these files on all the four nodes let me just uh, try to ping all this um, so i'll clear the screen first then we'll uh, run the uh, ping commands and uh, so basically the idea is all the nodes should be communicating with each other in this uh, configuration so uh, so that uh, they will know each other and uh, the communication will happen between them so in in traditional uh, i mean in, if you are uh, managing any organizational uh, um, data guard so in that case what happens is uh, there will be a communication already established between the primary as well as the si secondary side so uh, we don't have to manage but in case of uh, uh, virtual box uh, we will be using like a similar um, uh, ip segment so you know, so there will be a proper communications and uh, um, I have highlighted this is very very important step if you are doing it on virtual box so um, please make sure that this step will be done otherwise your um, this thing will fail let me just paste this command ping command so we are just trying to ping the standby from the production as well as we are um, trying to ping other instances so most of these ping commands are reachable even you can see the um, your scans are getting the ping from this 
output so that means from production one prod one you are able to ping and uh, similarly you have to do the same thing for other um, nodes as well like a primary instance two we will be doing the same thing as well as we have to do it for um, I mean standby node one as well as standby node two so just ping all these uh, and see the output if if particular node is unable to ping you just have to manage it okay but uh, as a primary requirement for your entire configuration it should be a pingable otherwise uh, it will fail okay so this is done and now we'll move to further steps let me just uh, clear the screen and uh, i'll show you so meanwhile uh, if you're uh, i mean uh, liking this video just click on like and uh, please share to your colleagues uh, and friends if you if they want to learn how to configure a two node rack uh, they will be definitely this video going to help you so let me just uh, log into primary database and we'll be performing all these steps so i'll go back to my slides from slides uh, you can see that the primary side we have to perform basically we have to enable the force login on the primary side so i'll log into the database i'll try to do all these necessary changes meanwhile we have to open the alert logo as well so i'll i'll run the tail command for the alert logs in order to verify all the changes which is getting have in the database so this is my app oracle diag okay rdbms prod one trace alert so this is my alert log for node one and similarly we have to do for node two as well so using the tail commands will be running the sorry u02 is my oracle mount point so sorry diag rdpms rod rod to choice alert okay so or i'll do i'll just copy this so <clears throat> this is my secondary node um of the production side and this is primary and this one is secondary both the alerts are open and i'll, I'll log into the oracle users and from there we'll execute all the commands that is we have to run the okay so first thing first let me just uh, go to notepad from here we can uh, we have to basically execute the force login we have to verify the whether the force login is enabled on the database or not so it is not enabled we have to enable it so quickly i'll copy these commands and we have to execute it okay so we have executed it and again we'll verify it by executing the select command from v dollar database force login is the uh, options that we have to select okay so from alert which is uh, it is also reflecting that changes is happened so next thing that we have to do is we have to copy the password file from the primary side to standby sites and uh, um, basically password file resides in your uh, asm disk group so from here we have to basically copy this password file i'll copy it quickly and uh, so i need to log into the grid users and uh, try to execute these commands so i'll do it quickly i'll be on mute so using this command pw copy uh, we have given the password file name and this is the location where we are copying so this file is generated and what we have to do is from the root users i have to just basically i will go to the tmp location and uh, will modify the permission for these files so that uh, uh, it is reachable so ch on oracle and o install is the group and this is your file 
so you you can cross check it okay so my file is uh, generated and what we have to do is basically we have to copy this file to other two nodes okay so we have to uh, copy this file on standby and uh, <clears throat> let me just paste the location of these files and uh, you have to make the password file naming something like this and this is oracle users from we are copying it to standby one and uh, it's, it's naming convention will, will be like uh, ora pw and stby is your one is this instance one for standby so i'll copy this password by providing the password for these users okay let me just see one more time mm -hmm. oracle home stby Mm -hmm. This will be DBS location. I think we have to provide the complete path. Let me just log into the Oracle users and we have to copy the entire path from here and uh, <clears throat> So this file is copied. Let me just uh, go to DBS location. And we have to basically verify whether this file is copied or not. So I think it is not copied. Okay, let me just recheck. Something is missing out over here. Oh, see, this is copied or DBS, not DBS location. So we'll provide the DBS as well. So this is done now. This should this time it should not provide any error. So this file is transfer on node one, and similarly we have to do it for node two as well. And uh, this time we have to provide the naming convention at stby two, and you have to change basically your host name. So this is also done. Okay, you can cross verify on node two as well by logging to uh, stby two since there is a no password required you can directly go to these locations and uh, within a single command so it is also transferred to node 2 as well okay this is very important because uh, during the time of uh, your rack configuration i mean a dr configuration the password should be available on both the nodes otherwise it will create some problems and uh, in future videos i'll be making a about like how do you how you can modify your password so if you have a two node rack uh, environments so just wait for those videos and uh, meanwhile you can do it uh, you can subscribe my youtube channel so next thing that we have to do is on the primary sites uh, basically uh, uh, two separate steps are there so basically we have to co uh, configure the standby redo log files this is not required in case case of uh, maximum performance mode but it is required only when if you have a maximum availability or maximum protection modes if you i mean i have um, created a separate video about what are the different um, modes of your standby you can watch those video you can learn uh, about uh, protection modes of a uh, standby so if th that is the case then then only you need to create a um, standby redo log files on the primary sites otherwise it is not required so so in this case what we'll doing uh, we are just a safer side we are creating a standby redo logs files and uh, before we create a redo log files i'll i'll just uh, go through the uh, current um, detail about the log files which is existing on the server so uh, the logic is whenever you have um, like uh, two threads like node one and node two if it is having three threads we have to basically use this formula uh, what the formula says is uh, uh, maximum number of logs per thread plus one into maximum number of threads okay so if you have three nodes so the, your threads will be three if you have two nodes threads will be two and uh, this is the maximum number of redo log files per thread so i'll show you the details so so that you will be able to understand better okay so i'll just go to user oracle and i'll show you uh, 
i've already created this um i mean sql files related to log so what it does is it provides me a log details so i'll execute this so here you can see we have a total two threads one as well as two and each thread has a two groups group one group two and each group has the two members one 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 two okay that means you have total uh, <clears throat> how many eight redo logs but what i'll do i mean uh, this is total uh, member so i'll try to uh, remove these uh, redo logs from data this groups um okay so what it, it does is basically it uh we will be keeping only uh, two separate um redo groups and uh, each group have a single redo log files okay so we have the max so in uh, in our case we are going to use two redo log uh, files uh, per threads and uh, the formula says Two plus one into two. That means total six standby redo log file is required. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll quickly uh, delete these um, redo log files, which is uh, extra to me. So I'll quickly remove these uh, one one member from each of these files. So at the end we will be having only four uh, number of redo log members. And uh, okay. So just allow me if two to three minutes. So I have removed. other um, members from these groups okay so each each group having a single single members okay and each is having 200 of mb size okay so total we can say we have uh, two threads and each thread has a um two redo logs each thread is having a two two redo logs so log 1 log 2 for thread 1 log 1 log 2 for thread 2 so we have each thread we have to redo logs one is additionally there is a formula and uh, so what i'll do i'll create a standby redo log files by executing these commands and uh, we will be adding the redo logs on the plus data uh, mount point so let me just paste these commands and it will execute it and on the um, background we can see the redo log standby log files are getting um created for thread 1 okay so we will create additional groups 5 6 7 for thread 1 and it is completed so similarly we have to do for thread 2 as well and uh, this is a uh, i mean steps that we can follow for uh, so size should be same so if it is having a 200 mb for redo logs online redo logs so for similarly you have to do the standby also So now what I'll do cross verify the details cross verify it so here you can see the standby log file details like we have uh, two threads and each thread is having three separate groups and uh, it it's having size of in bytes it is around uh, mb it is 200 mb okay and uh, we can verify it through views as well so executing this views we can uh, cross verify the details so let me show you once again So these are total groups we have, and out of which four are online and uh, uh, six are standby redo logs. Okay. So this is done on the primary sites. Next thing that we have to do is we have to modify the. Um, we have to basically modify the. So password file is done, and we have configured this uh, step uh, three and four. That is uh, configuring the standby redo log file and verifying the archive mode. Also, let me just uh, cross check the archive log details. So our archive log list will provide you the detail about whether your archive is enabled or not. So it is enabled. If it is not enabled, you have to enable it, and uh, then only you can proceed with your standby configuration. and next thing is on the primary side we have to basically modify the certain parameter files and uh, so so what i'll do we have to uh, basically modify these parameters like db unique name it should be uh, uh, different in case of primary as well as standby and uh, your db name will remain the same but db unique name will be different for both 
this uh, pr primary as well as standby and then we have a standby redo log config so set log archive config is very important if you are configuring data card so using the dg config option so you have to provide the db unique names for primary as well as standby and if since it is a uh, i mean um rack environment so we, we have to use a star, star asterisk and single quoted uh, so that uh, it will reflect on all the instances okay so whatever we are changing we have to modify on both instances okay so these are the parameters that we will be modifying so log archive config is done then we have to uh, i mean provide the service for which we are configuring the standby so uh, so stby will be like basically my service name will be um, which we have uh, defined in our um, uh, we will be defining in our net alias okay or you can say tns names dot aura file on the primary side we have to refer that uh, um, tns alias over here and uh, uh, lgwr async options that we will be using for asynchronous uh, purpose and uh, then valid for online log files and primary log file role and db unique name stby so all this uh, i mean this this will be a db unique name where we will pointing out uh, this destination okay where all these changes will uh, populated and then alter system set uh, command will use to modify the destination status like both should be enabled so by default uh, state one is enabled because we have already enabled on archive log so for state two we will be enabling and um, next we have to basically modify the file client and the file server so file client will point to the um, production uh, entry itself and file server will be pointing where from where it will fetch the read log gaps okay so all these uh, changes we will be doing and the file client and file server basically these parameters are already deprecated so you can skip the, these parameters okay next we have to modify the log archive max processes we will be modifying it to 30 you you can use the default uh, processes as well but uh, we'll be modifying it to some uh, higher values and then we have to modify standby file management to auto all the changes will be done for uh, both the instances okay and then we'll be creating a uh, uh, i mean one p file from this changes file and then we'll remove this file to standby and modify according to our requirement on standby okay so let me just uh, go and execute these commands okay so this parameter is not changed due to some regions so scope equal to both and sid equal to uh, i can i think during the time of copy it got some failure so nothing to worry about it you just have to paste it properly and uh, this will be resolved okay at the end we have to basically create a new p file so what i'll do i'll just uh, create the p file and there is one command that we have already kept inside like uh, to verify all the parameters related to standby that we have uh, uh, changed uh, you can verify through on sql also this is basically um getting the detail from v dollar parameters so uh, this uh, query we will be executing so we can verify it like archive dash one is archive services pointing to this stby and uh, these two are enabled and this will be file client file server dg config is set to prod and stby all these changes is happened and the next thing that we can do is we can uh, we have already created this p files new p files so we have to just cross check all these values so let me just run the cat commands and uh, <clears throat> okay so all these changes are there next uh, on the primary side we have to basically configure the listener entries on the primary sides and so uh, what you can do you can cross verify all the existing um, listeners you can execute these commands psi and ef graph listener uh, tns so here 
the default listener listener that is local listener and the, these two scans similarly uh, two uh, other listeners will be running on the um, primary instance too okay so all these uh, listeners are already up and running you can verify the status all these uh, i mean by executing it through uh, grid users so i need to just uh, exit from here and i'll go back to grid users and from there i'll be executing the commands okay yes you have fun grid so basically i'll execute the status for all these listeners you can verify these details okay so okay listener one is not there scan is not running on uh, scan one is not running on this node because of that it is throwing the error so that is ignorable that is nothing to worry about that part you can also verify their um listener files what are the entries so we will not modify anything on the primary sites as of now we'll be just uh, creating one um, tns names dot or a file on the um, oracle home so we'll exit from here and uh, log into oracle users once again basically we need to go to network location on the inside oracle home so here you can see that there is no existing tns names dot aura file will be there so we have to basically okay there is one file tns names dot aura okay let me just uh, i think we have already created it so nothing to worry about just let me just cat this files so it has okay so during the time of installation and this file get created so nothing to worry about so what i'll do i'll just uh, run the uh, vi this commands and uh, we'll be adding this new entry of related to stby so mm -hmm. this will be used basically for uh, and during the time of uh, standby configuration this will be used okay so it has the information about uh, standby node one and uh, this this will be our port for uh, which we will be creating one static listener and this will be on the standby node one okay and we are pointing it as an stby as a net alas and this will be my service names okay so this service name we have used in our standby configurations files we have mentioned you are over here so basically the logic is if you are having a static um, a listener for a configuration so it auto automatically taken care of using the ur have a options so so later we will be modifying this um, tns name file entries as uh, we, uh, our standby is configured okay so we uh, we are doing a two node rack uh, uh, standby configuration and out of which we have all, almost completed the primary site configurations and uh, now we have to proceed with the standby site configuration so i'll just move back to my slides and these are the steps that will be involved in the standby side okay so now guys we will be starting with standby side configuration for data guard so uh, so far we have like completed the uh, uh, prerequisites for primary side as well as a uh, secondary standby sites and uh, also we have completed the uh, database level changes on the production side and now we will be starting the, with the standby sites okay and uh, before we move i'll request all the new friends to subscribe youtube channels and uh, if you're if you're liking this video just click like button and uh, have some uh, comments if you have any questions so let's uh, move further so on the standby sides if uh, we have to basically manage uh, uh, these changes so first thing uh, we have to basically make a copy from the production of these p files and we need to modify the or you can say we need to create a new uh, p files for a standby on the uh, node one we will be creating it so the logic will be like uh, uh, we will be creating a, a p file and we will starting with the uh, instance one of standby first in, uh, instance okay so let me just uh, go back to my uh, 
notepad and from here uh, i just uh, i'll copy this uh, uh, details and i'll try to paste in my uh, I'll just copy it. So basically what we have done here is we have modified this. Uh, uh, you can see this highlighted the values that is standby. So if you if you uh, remember what we have created during the time of our primary configuration, so I'll just show you the details. So let me, we have created one P file so that uh, it was like initprod.sql so it was having the information about production side uh, parameter details so in this file you can see various uh, informations like we have kept it and uh, if you can see db unique names and db names okay so here uh, db unique name is prod and db name is prod so so we will be modifying these parameters and accordingly i just prepared even though you can look at this uh, location for audit uh, file test. So here it is for pro, pro, it is mentioning as a prod and uh, this is also prod prod. So it is basically uh, based upon your DB unique name. It got uh, created. And so what we will do, I'll just modify this uh, final parameter list and uh, you can see the thread one so thread is defined as like uh, uh it is only having one instance as of now during the time of our initial configuration we'll be keeping it one and maybe later uh, once our uh, replication will start then we will be adding the node two, and then we have to basically add thread two also and apart from that you can see and uh, cluster database parameter this is kept false as of now so this will be acting like a single instance uh, uh, standby database but later we will be adding the second instance also that will make my my track uh, data guard configuration okay so what i'll do i'll just copy these uh, parameters and i'll paste on my standby oracle users from there i just need to go to this location oracle home from on this path, uh, I need to go to the DBS location. So here you just have to run the LSF and LRT commands and there is no uh, P files as of now. So I'll create one in it and then STBY1, that is my SID name, and then Aura. So on this file, I'll make all these entries that i just copied from the my text pad and from here i just you can cross verify this init file like once again so basically i need to create these directories and uh, what i'll do i'll quickly create these directories so so that uh, during the our startup it, it won't failed okay so let me just uh, uh, be on mute and i'll create these directories and and do further operations okay So from here, ASM CMD hyphen P and we'll try to create this disk groups, which is uh, already there. So let me just see, I need to go to first uh, data. And inside this, I need to create MKDIR, STBY, CD, STBY and from here mkdir so there is options of creating these uh, directories from um, sql plus as well so i'll show it maybe later and similarly we have to basically create this archive stby and all those things so let me just uh, go to archive location from here I'll need to create 
uh, one more directrix and it is stby that is my db unique name and once again i need to create control file okay so i'll create mkdr so my all these required directories are created so what i'll do i'll just exit from this one and i'll clear the screen and now we have to basically uh, we have completed this step as well let me just go back to my screen and from here we have seen that uh, we have created these directories now what i'll do i'll need to start the database with newly created p files so let me just start up the database by using this p file location that we have already done so from the stby1 let me just clear okay so my screen is clear and we are almost set with database instance startup so so let me just retry the startup commands and uh, we'll see and uh, so i just uh, cross verified these paths and all this so let me just uh, go to the alert log as well so from here we need to go to this stby stby trace and alert so my database is currently um, no mount state this is my standby database so you can see the i just uh, uh, using the no mount command so and referring the p file i just started my uh, database instance in no mount state and after that we need to just basically um a step number four that is we have to come uh, temporarily configure the static uh, listener that will be used for the replication purpose so from this path i need to go to oracle home i'll stick to this uh, prompt on oracle users so let me just uh, okay on this path i need to create one more listener file so which has the information about my new listener which is uh, listener one in our case and uh, let me just show the entries for listener.ora so basically i have used uh, this is local host name of uh, stby one and this is my port that i'm going to use so i'll just start this listener ls and our ctl start listener one so it is successfully started and here you can see status is unknown since it is a uh, not uh, the database is not started so it has a static uh, entries and uh, we can see the status is unknown so nothing to worry about that part so the next thing that we need to do we have to basically um, create the tns files and i'll just uh, copy this and tns names dot ora So on the same path we will be creating a tns names dot aura file and uh, just paste these entries so it has information about both production as well as a uh, standby alas okay so let me just try to ping broad one sorry tns ping for broad and it is uh, reachable that means it is able to reach to stby also i'll try so it is also happening and uh, let me just uh, transfer the same file on stby2 so using scp commands i'll transfer this file tns names dot aura and 
stby2 so one more thing to note that uh, we will be like uh, we'll create only a listener on uh, i mean listener one we will be creating only on uh, stby1 that is node one which is that will be used for replication purpose and it has no significance once the replication is completed okay so this is also done and let me just go back to my so we have started this listener and we have configured the tns entries and uh, next that we have to do is we have to verify these tns connectivity let me just uh, try it from here so so these are my passwords uh, so sys user is used with sys password i'll try to connect and uh, let me just check so it is basically able to connect to the production environment from standby similarly we have to connect to standby also so this is also connecting so let me just select name from read so it should be failing yeah because the database is not mounted right so for the production it will show me something like uh, this it is connected okay that means my production instance is able to reach so similarly you can execute the same commands from this also let me just uh, copy it sorry i'll copy it from here So basically we are trying to get the information about so it is able to connect to production side as well and similarly you can cross check for your standby also it should be also connected so yeah that means both my production and a standby are able to connect to each other's that means this uh, connectivity test is successfully done now the next thing that we need to do is we have to connect it from my target database in in this case target will be my production database instance and this is my auxiliary database that is my standby database for which we are going to perform the replication using the rmn so on my node one of standby i'll execute this command rmn target sys and given the password at the red prod that is my network alias then we have the auxiliary database information and we are going to connect to the both the instances so here you can see that it is connected to my target database which is a prod and it is uh, open and we can see the database id and in case of auxiliary database it is saying that it is not mounted okay so that means uh, we are able to get what we are expecting and so from here we will be duplicating this database using rmn duplicate command which is duplicate target database for standby from the active database and we are using no file file name check so all the file names will be automatically replicated so we'll execute these commands on standby node one and it, it will automatically perform the all the operations in the backgrounds and it has created some script for taking the backup as a copy and then it has reused so restoration will happen you can uh, i mean cross check your alert logs for the standby also and uh, let me just show the screen on which we have executed this command so basically it is performing some uh, restoration operation for the data files okay so this is getting restored on the plus data uh, disk groups so now currently you can see the data file three are getting restored so this is how you can perform the data guard configuration and and now we are achieving what we are expecting so so we are good with the restoration and uh, duplication is also happening so so here the last message that you can see rfs connections are allowed that means it is successfully um, completed my uh, replication and we can now exit from this prompt okay let me just uh, come back to 
next screen that we are going to perform so we have completed so far stand by side step seven and now the next target is uh, that is step eight and nine which says we have to verify the standby read logs and all these files and then we have to basically create a sv file from the existing p file okay so let me just uh, use my notepad that is uh, quicker and faster so let me just copy these commands i'll execute from the standby node one so let me just log in again we are just uh, mounted node one only uh. we are not mounted standby node two that is still down once our uh, production side i mean standby node one um, operations are over then we will be doing further operations okay so here you can see all the standby read logs groups are already created and uh, here all, you can see all the online and all all these files are already created so one thing you can do is we can run this command call member formatting we can do a70 so let me just recopy this command one more time so there are various uh, uh, online log files as well as standby log files they they are created and uh, this is the information uh, as well as you can verify the db names and the current status so here you can see that it is physical standby database uh, role is showing my physical standby and here you can see it is in mounted status okay and uh, this is the instance name also you can see, see the um, db unique name so parameter db underscore unique so it is stby that means uh, still my database uh, i mean it is a standby database okay so next thing that we need to do is we have to basically create a, a p file from the existing uh, sorry sv file from the existing p file so what i'll do i'll just uh, run this command so it will create one um, file on my system so basically by using this command so basically we have to bring our uh, bring down our database and let me just uh, okay copy it so we, we will be bring down our standby node one instance and after that we'll be doing some uh, I missed something i guess uh, first we have to create a sv file then we have to bring down the database by mistakenly i just bring down the database first and uh, so let me just remount the database so using startup no mount commands i will try to mount the database let me go back to on the place which we are stop the database so from here i need to basically modify this script and uh, okay so we are good and we just copy these commands and uh, i need to execute it okay the location problem again it is should be a dbs location So again, my database instance is getting mount. Since we don't have the SP file, we need to provide the entire path for P file. And once this is done, then we will be creating one SP file and then, then we will be doing further changes. So we will be creating, sorry, again, we have copied the same thing. Let me just go back to so basically we have to create one sv file on the data disk group 
and uh, so it is created this uh, new file sp file with the name uh, sp file stby.ora on this uh, disk groups and once this is done then you need to basically bring down your database So using these commands, what we are doing here, we have just passing the SV file location um, inside my init file. So whenever it is going for a startup, it will automatically uh, pick this location of SV file from the init file at OS level. And uh, it will automatically refer that SV file details. And uh, from there we can, uh, I mean, the database will get start. So, we have to basically perform these quick operations first. So let me just uh, quickly go to these locations and uh, these operations are done basically. Okay, so let me just re-execute lsfnlrt commands and uh, run the cat command for init stby1. So we'll come to know. So this is having basically sv file location which is pointing to my data disk group um, location of sp file and this is also transfer on node 2 as well so everything is taken care now and uh, now next thing that we need to do is we have to uh, start the database in no mount and uh, sorry mount state and now in this case my database will be in uh, using my sp files which is uh, kept on uh, i mean data disk group files okay so the dt and database is getting started and uh, you can run the command so parameter sv file so it is giving me the location of plus data disk group okay so that means it is successfully uh, pointed to where uh, we wanted it so next thing that we need to do here is we have to basically add the instance to so as per my documentation so st step number 10 that is uh, add any parameters for stand instance to okay so we will be adding this uh, additional values like undo table space for um, second instance and it its SID will be stby2 so we will be informing the sv file to uh, hold this information as well uh, before we start the instance two so alter system set instance number one for one one and stby is the sid and all those so similarly we have to modify all these changes and we have to add thread one and thread two informations and uh, cluster database should be true remote uh, or listener should be stby scan then uh, port details we have to provide and then we have to bring down the database and restart in order to make all these changes effective okay i'll just copy it from my notepad and we'll try to execute these commands if anything go goes wrong we'll be re-executing it so we are on the node so all these changes is done and now my database is getting down from the alert we can monitor it and uh, <clears throat> it will automatically start also because we have given the commands so start up to mount next step is that we need to basically add this database in ocr file so using srvctl add database hyphen db then db unique name we have to provide oracle asm uh, home oracle home basically so this is my rdbms oracle home this this will be my role of the database that is physical standby startup option you can give mount or open for uh, standby database and then sv file location that we have uh, created previously so this using these commands you can add your database in ocr file information and once that is done then we have to basically add the instance both instances in this uh, uh, database information file and once that is done then we will be starting the database and will executing this uh, status of the database and also we can verify the crctl stat uh, resource hyphen d commands for 
verifying whether all the uh, changes are effective in the cluster registry or not so let me just re uh, i mean go back to my screen and from here what i'll do i'll try to execute the um, these commands of uh, adding the oracle home in ocr so just i'll copy these commands and uh, we'll try to execute it right away so let me just execute it so this is uh, adding the database in the cluster that is done instance is done so next is SRVC till start database hyphen D from here you can see my database is getting started further that means it is uh, starting and that is uh, opening the database basically okay so all these changes are taken care in the backgrounds so the next thing that it, it will do it will uh, start the database and once that is done it will <coughs> start the other instances also or we can say uh, we can bring down the node one and then completely we'll try to start the database okay so both my node two and node one database started and here on the node two of the my standby i can verify these details so by using pmon command also we can verify so here you can see stby2 is uh, also started and uh, <clears throat> what i'll do i'll just go by go to my alert log for node 2 and we'll try to see what is the information printed in the alert logs okay so this is my trace location then we have the alert log using the tail command so spelling mistake is always there so my both the st uh, st standby instances are up and running so i just created this check file so it has the information about like uh, all the component details and the patch details so here you can see that all the patches which we have applied previously is automatically getting reflected in the database detail as well so this is my database and it is physical standby database but it is open in read only modes because uh, of its nature physical standby database opens in read only mode and okay so what we need uh, need to do in next is here we have to basically verify the roles and also we have already done these parts uh, and the next thing that we need to do is we have to enable the, the recovery on the standby so this is my standby and uh, what we can do we can monitor the alert logs and uh, it should apply the redo logs so here you can see the media recovery is happening on the standby sites that means we have successfully <coughs> completed our task that we have started uh, and this video is basically a very lengthier i know i've i've covered everything from scratch like uh, how to start with your how to start with your uh, i mean configuration of your virtual box and then we have covered i mean how you how to perform the rack configuration and then we have covered primary level primary database side uh, configuration changes for two node rack database dr data guards and uh, we have covered uh, stand by side configuration so entire video might be a, a little longer but please watch till the end so that you can able to understand and also you can uh, again connect to your database on primary as well and verify the certain uh, other details as well so let me just re-log in and uh, from here this is my production and uh, this is my standby okay so once we start the recovery its status will be changed to read only with apply okay so we have just uh, performed this task so and uh, i mean you can verify these details from production also what is the latest uh, archives that is generated so we have the two sequences for thread one it is 14 and thread two it is four okay so similarly on the primary instance node one and node three we have to basically perform the two three logs switches and we'll cross verify whether it is 
getting applied or not so i'll go back to my alert logs on the node one of the standbys so here you can see the recovery is happening that means uh, no issues are observed and similarly you can perform this operation on the node 2 also so let me just <coughs> log into node 2 So let's see whether these changes are applying. Yes, this is also getting applied on the standby. That means uh, it is able to apply the log change, uh, log switches, which is happening. <clears throat> okay. So the next thing that you need to verify, we have to basically go to the standby and uh, check which is the latest applied log and those information. So let me just paste this. so this is not captured yet let me just run the uh, one query that just i have so using this uh, gap.sql file which i created so from this view we can see the thread one thread two and what is my last archived log redo log so 18 was um, generated on thread one and it was applied successfully and there is no gap and similarly we have the node two which is uh, having the latest archive redo log as a seven and it is also applied there is no lags that means our uh, two node rag data guard is successfully completed and we have achieved what we have started at the beginning so let me just uh, <clears throat> go back to my initial screens so that uh, we can see what we are trying to achieve and what we have done so we have this primary site of um, two node rag database prod one prod two and it is a read write mode and this is my standby site that is dr side and we have the two node stby one and stby two so both is able to uh, replicate from production to standby sites that means we have completed this tutorial successfully so guys uh, i hope you have enjoyed this video so far and if you have any question about anything on any point you can send me an email and you can also <coughs> Uh, send me a whatsapp text uh, i provided the details in the description if you have any question please send and uh, please like this video and uh, if uh, so i'll stop this video right away and uh, thank you for watching this video please subscribe my youtube channel if you are new on this youtube channels um have a great day bye bye